It is National Quilting Month and coming up next on At Home, we're gonna make this simple pre-cut, pre-fuse applique sign for your sewing room that you can make entirely your own. Be sure to check it out. I don't know about you guys, but when I'm in my creative space, I like to surround myself with things that inspire me and uplift me and keep me motivated to work on these projects that I'm uh, working on. And so I designed this little sewing room sign, which I think turned out so cute. I kept it super simple because I want you guys to use your imagination, add borders, make this your own. I can't wait to see what you do with it, but I do wanna walk you through how this is made. This is a great project. It comes available in a pre-cut, pre-fused applique pack, which you know that I love, but it's also a free printable download for you that you can download those reverse letters to make this your own if you would like. So let me tell you how we're gonna make this. To begin with, you wanna pick your background, and I use this beautiful Aruba color, and I cut it down to 16 by 26. So I have that ready to go. And I always, when I'm working on applique projects like this, like to iron mine in half both directions to give me some guidelines. So I'm gonna do that first. It just gives me a place that I know should be straight when I go to add the letters later. So we've got this folded this way. We'll press it in half. And then open it up longwise and do the same thing. There we go. Now, if you are going to use the printable and you're going to download the letters, you're going to take your black fabric and you're going to fuse that to some heat and bond or um, any type of fusible adhesive that you're going to iron onto the back of that fabric and get it ready to go before you trace out your letters. Because the pre-cut pre-fuse already has all of that done, I can just pull it out of the pack and it's ready to go. So I have my shapes here. Just slide this out. There we go. Here's the first half of sewing. There we go. Room and the little detail lines. And here is the banner that goes across the bottom. So now the next step, if you're working with the pre-cut pre-fuse shapes, is there's little tabs in between the fabric that holds it together. And so I'm gonna take a minute really quick and I'm gonna snip all of these apart. You do wanna use scissors because there's enough thread there that if you try and pull it apart, it's going to snag the fabric, which we don't want to happen. So I'm gonna cut this all out really quick and I'll meet you back here. Okay, I have these all cut out and ready to go. They're trimmed apart and I just kind of left them laid out um, so I knew where they would go. I wanna point out on the banner that goes across the bottom, there are some very small pieces. So be really careful when you're working with those and just kind of keep them together. And you do wanna go ahead and peel off the little paper that comes off the backs of those and they just pop right off of these little ones. So I'm gonna do that really quick. And you can see how the adhesive side has like a little bit of a kind of a gummy texture. You can totally see that adhesive on there and it peels off very easy. And so I have gone ahead and peeled off the rest of these. And remember we ironed the guidelines onto our background fabric. So to begin with, I'm gonna use my big sewing letters first. We're just gonna bring this over here and I like to work on my pressing surface so that I don't have to shift this around and worry too much about it. And to begin with, I am just going to set these in place. And then I will come back with a ruler and adjust this. Close. 
and the bottom of the word sewing lines up right with our center line. So that is why it's easy to start there. And then now I'm going to grab my little ruler and I like to just make sure that I'm close to the same width from either side. So I'm just going to slide this out just a little bit. So I'm about three inches from the outside, went a little far. That looks pretty good. And then I just kind of eyeball all of this so it looks like my G can come over quite a bit. There we go. And it just takes some figuring. But I think that looks pretty good. So since I have that in place, I'm going to go ahead and press this. When you're working with um, fused applique, you want to make sure that you're not pushing your iron and running the risk of flipping up one of those edges and catching that adhesive on the iron. So we're just going to press down and hold and work our way across the design. Just takes three or four seconds to get that first fuse. And then once you have it, you can go over it again to make sure it's really good and stuck with a nice hot iron. That looks great. All right, so next up, I'm actually gonna bring in the banner. And because I want this to be symmetrical, I'm gonna use my ruler and measure how far down my letters are from the top. And they should be right at two inches, which they are. And so I'm going to shoot for the same distance on the banner. So I'm just going to place this here, slide it down until I get close to that two inch mark. And of course there's a lot of wiggle room here, but I found that this works well. And then I also want to check the sides and that's about an inch and a half on either side. And then I think that looks great. So we can press that in place. You'll notice I did not put those little pieces in yet. I'm going to come back and add those at the end. So we're just going to press this down. These types of projects are so satisfying because they come together so fast. Now let's grab those little pieces and we can set them in. So here's my P. You'll notice that the, the P and the R are slightly different shapes. And so I just like to pay attention to that. And the company that makes these pre-cut pre-fused shapes, they actually have um, a video where they show you that you can pounce this pattern and it'll tell you exactly where to place your little centers. But I find that I have good enough luck with just eyeballing it. So that's what I do. We're not after perfection here. We just want to make cool things. So there's that one and this one. And then one more, the tiny little center of the A. Make sure that paper's off the back and place that down. So again, because we're working with these little, little tiny shapes, we just want to press, not slide, and then move across. There we go. Ta-da! Now those are all fused. So now all that we have left is we're going to add room and these little line details in between the two. So we can pull these over. Just like so. And if you want to bring in your ruler and measure this, obviously you can. I just eyeball a lot of this. 
and find that it is good enough for me. I do like to just check those outside lines, there's my ruler, and make sure that we're close to the same distance here. These are just a little over two and a half from the edge. So we'll just center that up. I think that looks really good. So now we can press that down. There we go. So satisfying how quickly that comes together. So from this point, you would finish this off with either top stitching or a blanket stitch. I went with a blanket stitch, but before we jump to that, I do wanna remind you of these little sections in the banner. Because most of this is going to be contained and not fly away, I did not go around every single one of these letters within the banner portion. I came in and I just did some straight stitches on any of these areas that could lift. So the centers, the little pieces that come in on the E, we're just gonna do a straight stitch. So let me actually turn this back to my regular straight stitch so I can show you what I mean. There we go. And let's just do right here in this area. So we have the little center of the A and we have these lines on the E. And so I just put this under the machine and I'm just gonna take a few tiny stitches to make sure that when I uh, quilt over this, I don't have to worry about these little pieces lifting. There we go, just a few to tack that in place. Then we can trim those threads. There we go. And then now we can move to the E. And you can back stitch across that a few times if you want. And then we can trim that away. And so I just repeated that all the way across these letters. Because what I wanted to make sure of is as I use this, if it has to be washed, when it goes to the quilter, I don't want any of those little pieces to lift away and cause a problem. And so it worked great. I didn't have to go all the way around every letter. Um, and then from that point, we're just going to move to the blanket stitch, which is what I did do around all of these letters and on the banner. So on this particular machine, the blanket stitch that I'm using is setting 24. So I'm gonna turn to that. And then I'm gonna increase my stitch length to 3.5 and my stitch width to three. So I have that done here. And then we are just going to choose a letter and make our way down. Of course, I'm using black thread, so it just blends right in. Then we stop in the corner and pivot. goes really, really fast. And I love the way that the blanket stitch finishes that edge. And you don't have to worry about it fraying, but I am not opposed to raw edge applique either and just doing a straight stitch. I do that a lot. There we go. And I'm just gonna continue all the way around this. Right. 
So I think that was enough for you guys to get the idea how quickly the blanket stitch goes and how it finishes that off nicely. You can see on the finished sign that I went ahead and quilted this using champagne bubbles and I bound it with that black edge to just really make it pop. But again, I wanna remind you that you can add any border you want, put blocks around it, um, make it scrappy. I just think it could be so cute. Put it on your favorite print background. I went with the black letters because it would pop off of so much. And so I'm really looking forward to seeing what all you do to make this your own. I ha hope you have a wonderful National Quilting Month and that it's full of all kinds of quilty goodness. And until next week, have a great time. See you later. Hey everyone, it's Misty. Thanks for watching at home. If you aren't already a part of our Missouri Star family, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you want a notification every time we release a new video. I'll see you next Monday on the newest episode of At Home.